Hi, it's Todd with SoundPure at AES 2011. I'm here with David Josephson, who is one of the most brilliant minds in uh, microphone technology. And uh, it's just always an education to, to sit with David and hear what he has to say. And um, I'd like him to say a few words about um, the design of, of the C617, um, as well as uh, the new baffle that they've created to provide a little bit extra flexibility, that something that people have been asking for. Um, but maybe you can just start by telling us a little bit about, um, first of all, how the, the microphone body works and in delivering this higher voltage um, and, and what people can attain by achieving that and also the capsule design that, that really is something unlike anyone else um, in the industry is doing. The 617 is actually a, a kind of an old idea. Um, the idea being to use a, an instrumentation microphone capsule that is as optimally flat as um, physically possible, um, together with a musically transparent uh, electronics uh, body, power supply, and so on, uh, to make it useful for uh, music recording of, of all kinds. Basically, we wanted to make the very best omnidirectional microphone. Uh, there's some very special aspects of the uh, microphone body and of the capsule that uh, combine to make a, a particularly useful and, and versatile tool. Um, starting with the body, um, we uh, thought that we would do what various experimenters over the years have done, uh, and that is to make a a way to supply a standard laboratory type instrumentation capsule with the voltages and, and, uh, and interface that it needs to work properly. And in this case, um, that means a polarization voltage of 200 volts, uh, which is usually supplied by an external supply, uh, and a, uh, an impedance converter follower stage with an input impedance on the order of 5 or 10 gig ohms. It's hugely high. And that basically means that the capsule doesn't have to do any work. You're just sensing the charge moving around in the capsule uh, caused by the diaphragm motion. Uh, so the body takes standard 48 volt phantom and generates 200 volts polarized uh, and then samples the, um, the voltage that's generated by the, the motion of the diaphragm in the capsule. It basically tries to be out of the way sonically as much as possible. It is a uh, transformerless design, active, balanced, both sides driven, uh, and it's basically the um, cascode front end balanced line drive that we use in, in all of our uh, transformerless microphones, um, optimally quiet and so on. The capsule is, um, is uh, a standard uh, Microtech Gefell product, uh, but it is a special selection for us. It's not just that it has our logo on it, uh, they make for the uh, instrumentation market to meet a, um, a linearity and flatness standard required for sound level meters. Our specifications are actually a little tighter than that. We want plus minus one dB, and that's typically achieved uh, from about three hertz to over 20 kilohertz. Um, and that's actually really important. It, it, it isn't so much important that there is less variation, but that the variations are very, very smooth. There aren't any sharp variations. It's the sharp variations uh, in a lot of directional microphones and so on that cause a sort of an unnatural sound. So we want to be able to um, make that as transparent as possible. There are also some internal aspects of the capsule design that uh, Gefell has continued in their uh, manufacturing process that other companies have abandoned because they're too expensive, too troublesome. The diaphragm, which is behind this, this protection grid, is actually a piece of uh, pure nickel that is nine-tenths of a micron thick. Um, com compared to other um, omnidirectional micro high-end omnidirectional microphones that can be more than 20 microns thick. The other important thing is that the diaphragm is actually grown in place. 
they have a really tricky process where the uh, the housing of that part of the of the microphone is actually covered over and the open part of the housing is covered over with a layer of this nickel uh, so there isn't the, the whole nickel the, the whole metal structure is grown as one uniform uh, piece that is the same in all directions and that turns out to be a lot more important than we actually ever thought it was the result is that it is a pure sampler of the pressure of the sound wave that's incident and that's um, basically gets out of the way and that's what you want you want it to be as analytical as possible without adding any of the um, distortions of, of, of typical uh, laboratory instrument microphone uh, electronics a lot of people tried this early on with old capsules and and uh, microphone electronics that were met for, made for measurements and the results weren't so good we, we repeated that that difference is not in the capsule that difference is in the electronics and that's where we use the same electronics basic design that's in the 700 series and uh, the other transformerless microphones and it's it's pretty good it works just fine well I can say confidently as a user uh, it, it really is the most detailed, accurate, and, and sort of just, in terms of delivering information, it's, it's the most comprehensive in that way of any microphone that, that I've ever encountered. Well, that's kind of where we were going, so that's good. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's, it's pretty as astonishing what, what it's able to attain and achieve, and obviously uh, any of our viewers can, can certainly see what we're able to capture with this. We've done countless recordings at the studios uh, using these microphones. They really have become our reference standard um, uh, for, for that kind of a microphone. Before we go on to the, the pressure ball here, let me uh, actually do something here that might be a little scary for most users. Why don't you hold this sure. one? And if you can uh, have, a, have a look here. This is the protection grid for the microphone. It has a particular advantage over a lot of other instrumentation microphones for instrumentation purposes in that this top surface there's actually a little line here. That's an insulator between the top surface and the rest of the microphone. This is both a protection grid and a calibration electrode. So you can actually make a frequency response uh, curve of the pressure response of the microphone with a special fixture and a power supply and a generator connecting to this as the driver and you can then drive the diaphragm and measure its response. Now I was talking about this special diaphragm material. I'm going to do something that I don't recommend anyone else do, ever, ever, ever. <laughs> but I can do it and I can break it, right? <laughs> so we'll take that grid off, if we can, very, very carefully. That's the diaphragm. And if you look at, look at it really closely, you'll see there's, no, there's a little bit of dust on it. But you'll see that here from the side, that's all one piece of nickel that comes up the side, across, and down the other side. That's all grown in place and polished there uh, as, a, uh, as one um, structureless form. And that's, uh, there are lots of reasons why that's important. We don't have time to go into it, but it's really, um, that's why we continue to use the special version of the Gefell capsule rather than any of the other various um, types that might be uh, similar or might seem to be similar uh, in the in the marketplace today. It's, it's pretty amazing. I've really never seen anything like it. <laughs> it's probably because there isn't anything else like it. <laughs> they have been doing this for for some years yeah. and then they figured it out. Well, um, you know, one of the products that we recommend for anybody that gets the 617s has always been your Jekyllin disc, which is a true Jekyllin spec disc. Um, it's one of the only ones that's designed the way it was always intended to be designed, uh, is my understanding. But that's right. He was fairly, he is fairly clear about his uh, instruction of the absorptive characteristics of the disc. Anyone can make one. It was patented for a while. It's long since expired. But you really do need that layer of about an inch thick. Uh, we use a, a special polyurethane foam. 
He's used things like um, sheep's wool, um, fleece, things like that. That all works, but if you want the consistent thing every time, um, the, uh, the disc according to his specification is available. That's an important well, tool. And, and it's, it really is a, something that can add a lot of flexibility and versatility.